Hey, this is me, Marvel. I just finished watching Son of Zorn, which is an interesting little show. Um, basically, I just watched one episode. Basically, you have this guy, like, essentially looks like... Is it He-Man? Yeah, I believe it's He-Man, whatever. Um, he essentially is built like that. Um, and... I thought at first maybe it was like a deal where the, this dad was like, you know, this online game thing that he played. And, you know, and then like he would just get kind of called out of it and go back to his normal family life. That's what I thought maybe. Kind of find out. Actually, this cartoon character <laughs> somehow crossed, I guess, this cartoon world exists within the real world. Um, and this guy... He man look alike <laughs> basically met this woman, this real woman, and they had a son. And I guess at some point they divorced, you know. And um, it's but he hasn't really been a part of his son's life in a long time. And so his son's like seventeen or whatever now, and he looks his son looks um normal, you know, like you know he looks like a real son, you know, until you find at the end of the TV show, end of the episode. You see his leg and you realize, oh, he's not, you know. Um, cause you kind of wondered, okay, well, normally most children show aspects of both parents, you know, on some level, you know. So you're kind of wondering, where's the aspect of this cartoon guy who show up in his, in his son, you know. And you get to see the get the confirmation, you're going to need, like, okay, that, okay, well, not. I mean, you have to kind of half and half, right? And so it should be some kind of interesting mix. And basically, the episode just kind of follows this guy, like this really kind of over the top barbarian type guy, adjusting into the real world and trying to connect with his son when he comes from a totally different world. Um, and nothing in that's in his world that he comes from sticks with, um, matches up with this real world that he's being immersed into. And so he has to really adjust to this world, mainly for his son, so he can try to have some kind of bond with his son before his son gets too old and they don't connect anymore. And so it's interesting. It's kind of like a lot of allusions to, or analogies to real life. We have a situation where there's a dad and he hasn't really been, or any parent that hasn't really been a part of their child's life due to divorce. Um, and he just separated and one parent took a child or the child just went with one of the parents for the majority of the time. And then you have a situation where the child has grown up a lot and they didn't spend that much time with their other parent. And now their parent's trying to make a change and trying to be more apart. And they realize that they don't do something now, they're pretty much going to miss their entire window. And so um, it's very much relatable on that, on that term. And a lot of stuff that has scientific or, you know, out of the ordinary on the surface premises to it, where you kind of dig a little bit deep, you kind of realize this is actually kind of relate back to real life. You know, this isn't just like, you know, yeah, it's kind of bizarre on top. But as you dig a little bit deep, you kind of realize, wait a minute, this is actually talking more about things in real life, you know, and how things really are. It is kind of like go to the extremes to make a point about something normal. Um, and something a lot of people, a lot of parents and families deal with. And so I like that idea. I like that concept. And obviously they have the humor. And the humor is kind of like one of those humors where it's kind of a hit and miss, depending on what your humor is. Like it's kind of quirky um, and offbeat a little bit. Um, and, you know, humor is definitely a universal thing. And so some things that are going to make a lot of people laugh won't make other people laugh. Um, so something I thought was just kind of like weird or goofy, you know, it's going to be going to be like, ah, like laughing like a mile a minute. But at least you get a few chuckles, I think, in in there. I don't know if weird with that word, chuckle. Like, chuckle, chuckle, chuckle. <laughs> I always think of when I hear that word. Um, but yeah, it's, just, it's, it's an interesting show. It's a dark pack with a whole my chicken. It held my attention the whole time. I wasn't, it, no moment was I like, okay, when's this going to be over? It was like, I was actually generally enjoying the viewing experience. It just was odd. It was it's a different concept. And I've seen this concept work before, but never quite like this. And um, it's kind of unique in that sense. And I admire anyone for trying to do something different, you know, against the grain. And basically compiling two ideas, which is kind of like, you know, a sitcom, but with animation, you know, mixed in with it. You know, 
on the same screen, you know, and that's a unique thing, you know, and to make it work, they try to, they do a pretty good job of making it be cohesive and seem like they're actually really talking to each other for the most part. Um, I think for any actor that has to act to something that's animated, that takes extra work because not only are you doing, you're trying to get your stuff part, make sure you get your part right, you need to make sure that you're reacting to this thing that's not even really there as if it really is. So there's more work involved with that. You have to be a certain kind of actor to make that really believable. And for the most part, I think they do the best they can. It's one of those other things going to inv- in this if it's allowed to grow and get a couple more seasons under his belt, I think by a certain point in time, it's going to be like, they did a good job first episode off the bat, but I think they're only going to, only going to improve as it progresses, if it's allowed to progress, because some shows, most shows don't make it past the first season, and so, um, first or second season. So hopefully they're given the time, and they're and able to prove and do some, maybe some cool, you know, things um, socially or... Um, historically that are groundbreaking that other shows weren't able to do for the type of setup that it has. And I'm always looking forward to seeing people can push envelopes. The only thing I don't like is it's just starting apparently. I I'm I'm guessing this the show just started. Um judging by there's only two episodes available to watch. And but it sucks that now since we're in the you no know, neighborhood of instant gratification, thanks to Netflix and Hulu and all that stuff, you don't wanna wait, especially when you have on stuff like Netflix where you can watch a whole season. Literally, a new season of a show can be available to you instantly. Like a whole freaking season. Girl, what are y'all talking about? Y'all better get away from my apartment. <laughs> so I can make my recording. Um, but anyway, so, yeah. So we're living in this age of Netflix and where, you know, you can know you'll, you'll upload a whole season of a show. You just sit and watch a whole brand spanking new season of a show. You don't have to wait. You can't. You have to wait to watch one each week, one each week, one each week. No, you can watch it all. <laughs> and so, um, that's something I hate. That's why it makes it really hard for me to get into new shows. I kind of hate waiting. I hate that now that you know that everything's instantly available. Um, that's why I don't even like getting into new shows now because that format of okay, one new episode each week. And having to wait, yo, know, years for it to get crack up seasons. It's like or months for a whole season to pass. It's just like you just don't even have the patience for it. Just like, just give me a show that's already been completed. That way I can watch it at my own pace. I can watch it as fast or as slow as I want to watch it. And I know, okay, cool. The show's already completed. So now I know I gotta wait three weeks or wait a month or wait six months or a year or three years or ten years or whatever it is, I can sit down and watch the whole show from, from beginning to back <laughs> and have the comfort of knowing, okay, cool, this is all there is. There's nothing else I have to wait for. And um, that's how we get into binge watching. Um, and binge watching, whether it's on YouTube or movies, binge watching, I mean, every now and then it's good to kind of get away from like that, but you kind of need to like break that up. So anyway, y'all, I'm doing this recording running it way too long, but I just think Sun of the Zone is an interesting concept. Um, I like the idea. I like the way it's kind of animated and just kind of the offness of it a little bit. It is a little funny. Um, and so I hope it's able to progress into something more and stay on TV for a little bit of time. I think there's some promise and there's some potential there that can be grown. Um, like anything that's brand new. So this is me, Marvelly.